When we hear the phrase global warming or climate change, it stirs up a certain sense of apocalyptic dread, and rightfully so. We should be scared of global warming. It's a situation that, for a long time now, has only been getting worse, and it's almost at the point of no return. In March of 2019, expert speakers at the General Assembly Hall warned that we had a mere 11 years to prevent irreversible damage brought about by climate change. But how plausible is it that we can do what is needed within that time range? And just how close are we to a disaster? So what will happen if we don't manage to stop global warming? Since the start of the 20th century, the average global sea level has been steadily rising. According to the Climate Science Special Report, between the years 1900 and 2016, sea levels have risen by 6.3 to 8.3 inches. According to studies by the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, this is almost entirely due to man-made climate change melting ice in the Arctic. Ice cover in the Arctic Ocean has declined annually by 17,000 square miles. To put that amount of ice into perspective, that's twice the size of New Jersey and roughly 17,000 times the size of Riverside Country Park. What's not helping matters is that at the exact same time as the ice is melting, global warming is causing something called thermal expansion. To quote Volume 1 of Physics for Scientists and Engineers, Thermal expansion is the tendency of matter to change in its shape, area, and volume in response to a change in temperature. The heat of the climate is causing the oceans to expand. That alone is adding a deeply worrying amount of extra water to the world's oceans. And that's without even taking into account the 17,000 square miles of melting ice. All that extra water, all at once, is causing a truly daunting rise in sea levels. In the longer term, this looks like it gets notably worse. There is a significant concern among the scientific community regarding the stability of the West Antarctic Ice Sheet, also known as the WAIS. The West Antarctic Ice Sheet is the continental ice sheet that covers West Antarctica. According to Installment 35 of the Geophysical Research Letters, the three glaciers that make up the WAIS are losing mass at an alarmingly increasing rate and the data reveals they are losing more ice than is being replaced by snowfall. If we go by a preliminary analysis, the difference between the mass lost and mass replaced is about 60%. The melting of these three glaciers is contributing an estimated 0.0094 inches per year to the rise in the worldwide sea level. The latest thinking when it comes to looking at the future is that the WAIS is probably going to collapse entirely. That is an awful lot of extra water. Current estimations suggest that the WAIS will completely collapse within a millennium. But if things continue to go the way they are, it could collapse in its entirety just 300 years from now. Greenland's ice sheet is in a similarly dire situation. James Hansen, an American adjunct professor and director of the Program on Climate Science Awareness and Solutions, has suggested that by the year 2100, Greenland's ice sheet will have completely melted, raising the worldwide sea level by 23 feet. To put that size into perspective, that's two feet taller than Washington's nose on Mount Rushmore. Higher sea levels could impact tens of millions of people and wildlife all over the world. Those who live on islands or coasts will be badly affected. Another major aspect of global warming is that rainfall, snowfall, and all other types of precipitation will be heavier than ever and that means an increase in flood risks are inevitable. This looks to be a pretty serious problem for Europe in particular, which will be at an increased risk of inland flash floods, more frequent coastal flooding, and increased erosion from sea level rise. But it's not rising sea levels that are the only way in which our oceans will be affected. A major concern is ocean deoxygenation. Ocean deoxygenation is the expansion of oxygen minimum zones in the world's ocean as a consequence of anthropogenic emissions of carbon dioxide. The change has been fairly rapid and poses a threat to fish and other types of marine life, as well as to people who depend on marine life for nutrition or livelihood. Across the world's oceans, there are various pockets with little to no oxygen, known as oxygen minimum zones. They are a natural phenomenon caused by ocean circulation moving worryingly slow. 
The oxygen levels in these zones are so low that they are lethal to almost all marine life. What we are seeing happen is that these zones are expanding. Direct measurements show that the amount of oxygen in oceans around the world has decreased by around 2% over the last five decades. Climate change is universally thought to be the primary cause of this, so as time rolls on, that figure will substantially grow. And the risk of deoxygenation is not restricted to areas already low on oxygen. It's already occurring at all oxygen concentration in all ocean basins, and the problem is growing every day. The oxygen in seawater is essential for all higher marine life to survive. Simply put, the oceans are getting hotter and have less oxygen. And of course, the marine animals are dying. Imagine if your house kept getting warmer and warmer and running out of air. Imagine how uncomfortable you'd be. You would be desperate to get out. But obviously, marine life can't escape the ocean and are trapped there. This all might sound a little far-fetched, but a significant rise in flooding is something that's already happening and will only happen more if we continue down this devastating global warming trend. And there are even more troubling things on the horizon. When you're too hot, it's uncomfortable, right? You crack a window or you may turn up the AC to fix the problem. Well, animals and plants get just as uncomfortable, but they can't alleviate their pain as we can. As the Earth continues to warm up, crucial habitats will become inhospitable for many plants and animals. They are going to suffer, and they are going to struggle to survive in circumstances that they are not accustomed to. As a result, a variety of species will be at risk of permanent extinction. Sure, some may adapt or move. There is no way to know for sure. But many may struggle to adapt quickly enough and will go extinct in the blink of an eye. The planet has gotten hotter before, and animals and plants have often survived by evolving. But what's different about this time is that it's happening too fast for the animals and plants that are at risk to adapt. Again, this is something that's estimated to hit Europe pretty hard according to the USGS. The continent looks to suffer extensive species loss, along with a severe reduction in crop productivity. As bad as this may already sound, rising sea levels and mass animal extinction are only the beginning of where global warming is going to take us. To better understand other future possibilities, we need to address a common misconception. People assume climate and weather are synonyms like ancient and aged. But in reality, there is a key difference that is vital to understanding the realities of climate change. Some people might use the fact it still snows as evidence that something called global warming can't be happening. Because how could the planet be warming up and create snow? This comes down to a misunderstanding in regard to the words used. As explained by National Geographic, a higher temperature can actually cause more rain and more snow. Think about it. Sometimes when it's really hot in the evening, what happens? A thunderstorm. A sudden downpour of rain. The crash of thunder. A ripple of lightning. That is all triggered by a hot climate. The planet getting hotter doesn't mean we're about to get nonstop sunshine. Global warming means the weather, the world over, is going to be more mercurial than ever. There will be intense heat waves, you expect, but there will also be an increase in heavy rain, thunderstorms, and intense snowy blizzards. Fluctuations of extreme weather, of course, mean certain areas will experience much hotter days than people traditionally associate with the phrase global warming. To quote skepticalscience.com, global warming is causing more frequent heat waves, Record-breaking temperatures are already happening five times more often than they would without any human-caused global warming. This means that there is an 80% chance that any monthly heat record today is due to human industry. Skeptical Science also predicts that if we continue down the path we are on, extreme heat waves will become a norm across large chunks of the world by around the late 21st century. The Amazon rainforest is a great example of somewhere that is already struggling because of such heat waves. Back in 2005, an intense heat wave caused one of the worst droughts in human history. Rivers all but dried up, remote communities became isolated, commerce stopped dead, and thousands upon thousands of square miles of land burned for months on end. 
This raging fire released more than 100 million metric tons of carbon into the atmosphere. Jump ahead to August 2019, the month and year in which this very script I'm reading was written. And the same thing is happening again. The Amazon is ablaze right now. And spontaneous heat wave induced fires such as these are only going to grow all the more common. According to Greenpeace, each year the Amazon fire season gets longer. Between 1979 to 2013, the annual fire season increased by 18.7%. Sure, many forests have a fire season, and July to November is fire season for the Amazon. But the fires in the Amazon right now are far from natural and incredibly worrying on an epic scale. In summary, heat waves are causing droughts strong enough to burn forests. Sea levels are rising to dangerous levels. Fish are dying, land animals are going extinct, and the weather is becoming increasingly erratic, rendering the concept of seasons pointless. If we don't stop global warming, all of those already present issues will escalate to unprecedented and dangerous levels. What do you think needs to be done to stop global warming in its tracks? And are you ready to do your part? Let us know in the comments section below. And if you like the video, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you'll be the first to know when a new video arrives. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.